Welcome to Street Talk Africa. Remember, this is the show where we bring you the latest stories from the African continent, from news, politics, and even entertainment. I'm your host, Christine Mayama, and I'll be joined by my colleague, Kimani Mbugwa. Kimani, take it away. Thanks, Christine. Of course, our focus is on Africa, and here is what you can expect from this week's episode. Egyptians facing soaring prices are not seeing fruits of government reforms. New South African ministers sworn in. BBC launches VR app with Damning the Nile VR, a new documentary series. And Kenya anti-poaching dogs are wildlife's best friends. Traders at the textile market in Cairo's Al Azhar district were used to seeing their shops filled with customers, but soaring prices have driven many away. The reason for the spiraling costs? Drastic reforms that the government pledged would bring benefits to the Tamil hit nation. <laughs> المرتب طبعا كان بيقعد وبيقضي دلوقتي ما فيش 3000 4000 ما بيعملوش اي حاجه الاسعار بقت غاليه قوي الطاقه بقت 3 وبال 4 والناس حالتها بتقل ومصاريف بتزيد فما عندوش الامكانيه ان هو يشتري بقى ينزل يشتري بطانيه ولا كلام من ده ولا يجهز عروسه زي ما كان بيجهز الصناعه المحليه يا ريت ترجع يا ريت احنا بنتمنى كله بيشتغل انا اعرف صحابات ورش عيني احنا بنفر واحد اللي بقى مكنه واللي طفش واللي عالي الشركات الكلام انت ما فيش حاجة بتشجعه لو الحكومة تشجعه الصناعات دي المحلية دي هتلاقي فيه رواق هتلاقي فيه انتاج وفيه شغل A UN Rights Commission in South Sudan said there was sufficient evidence to charge at least 41 senior officers and officials with war crimes and crimes against humanity Many people argue that it would be impossible to collect evidence in South Sudan. We've done it. We have 58,000 documents that can be analyzed um, to help the prosecutor in the future. What you really need is the accountability process to work and for the African Union to say to the government of South Sudan, sign the memorandum of agreement so we can set up this court so it can begin its work. Already in our work, we've identified several South Sudanese officials who may bear individual responsibility for serious violations of human rights and international crimes committed since 2013. South Africa on Tuesday cautiously welcomed President Cyril Ramaphosa's sweeping cabinet reshuffle, which put reformers into key economic posts, but retained several scandal-tainted ministers to promote unity. After just 11 days as president, Ramaphosa stamped his authority on his government by clearing out several ministers seen as loyal to his predecessor, Jacob Zuma. Fellow South Africans, I have decided to make certain changes to the composition of the executive of our country. These changes are intended to ensure that national government is better equipped to continue implementing the mandate of this administration and specifically the tasks identified in the State of the Nation Address. Now, five puppies are being trained by American experts to join a tracker dog unit which has become pivotal in the fight against poaching in Kenya's Mara Triangle. Dogs that are active, uh, dogs that like to eat, um, you know, play a lot, things like that. But like I said, genetics and um, drives is what we're looking for, the proper drive to do the work. They normally put wire snares and maybe they can chase into valleys 
and to use the, the, the machets, the swords, and the pangas to cut them. There's still a lot of work to do, but it, we've caught, uh, caught over, I think, 4,000 poachers in the last 18 years. So that speaks great, uh, you know, how much they put effort to it. Without that, that we could have thousands and thousands of animals dead. The head of motorsport governing body, the FIA, on Tuesday encouraged Kenya to meet the road safety regulations necessary for the country to rejoin the World Rally Championship. FIA president said he was keen to see Kenya once again feature on the international rally circuit. So you deserve to have your rally back in the calendar. But it will, and as I said, I am your supporter, but you need to deliver the job. If you do deliver, you will get the rally in the calendar. If you don't deliver, you will not get it. The BBC has launched Damming the Nile VR, a two-part virtual reality news documentary series exploring the water politics of the Nile. Produced by the BBC VR Hub and BBC News, the two-part series is available now through a BBC VR app on the Oculus Gear VR store. The documentary is about a major new project, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, which threatens to upset the balance of power between neighbours and rivals Egypt, Ethiopia and Sudan. From Lake Tana, the Blue Nile begins its long journey to the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, and we have uh, produced the, uh, the first of its kind for the BBC, a virtual reality documentary uh, on the story uh, of the Nile, the Blue Nile, of the dam that Ethiopia is building, and the impact of that on the upstream countries, Sudan, and of course Egypt, which is very angry that Ethiopia is burning this dam. Canyons and gorges before reaching a new man-made obstacle. I think the story is a very strong one. Um, there's a lot of tension on the Blue Nile at the moment uh, because of the dam that Ethiopia is building and uh, Egypt is very angry with that. Um, why virtual reality? Well because we want to try and push the boundaries here. This is very new technology. We're very keen to try and get people to, to see this as it should be seen. It's immersing you in, in a world and um, actually takes you to the Nile. You experience flying over the Nile, going over the, uh, the Luxor Valley in a hot air balloon, riding on a tram in Addis Ababa. As a foreign correspondent, my job is to try and take um, viewers and listeners to places to try and explain to them what it's like and put the story in context. With virtual reality, I can actually take you there and put you there and talk you through it. You come with me, you come with my crew, on this journey up the Nile to explore a, a, an interesting and potentially dangerous situation. And that's it for today's episode. Remember you can follow us on our social media platforms to get updated on regular content. That's at NTV Kenya on Twitter and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel which is NTV Kenya. I've been your host, Christine Mayama. Until next time, goodbye. And I am Kimani Mbogwa. See you again next week with another exciting episode of Street Talk Africa.